winter's kind of a bittersweet time here. Um, a lot of the exhibits are empty. We hibernate pretty much all of the North American and high altitude Central American rattlesnakes. We keep a few awake. Um, all of our diamondbacks that we use for the dog training for rattlesnake ready, those guys stay warm year round so that we can offer training year round. Kind of, a, as I said, bittersweet. All the exhibits stay nice and clean, um, but they're kind of sad because the snakes aren't in them. Um, it does, however, give us a nice break. I get to focus on projects and uh, get ready for the next season of babies. And we do hibernate the collection um, for multiple reasons. Uh, biggest reason just being that in the wild, you know, they deal with it and uh, it's part of their natural cycles in nature. That is number one. Number two, uh, we do feel that it improves their health and longevity and uh, yeah, it gives their metabolism a nice break to take kind of three months off. And speaking of a nice break, again, I get a nice break um, from them and then when it comes time to wake them up, I'm excited to, to see them again and start ramping up husbandry all over again. You'll notice in a lot of these exhibits, we have little cards um, out that say that they're hibernating. That's kind of how I keep track of who is in our outbuilding and who's not. And as I say the word hibernating over and over again, I know there's going to be a few reptile fanatics that are gonna say, hey, it's brumation for reptiles. That's a different word. So turns out that word has been retired. Herpetologists don't actually use it anymore. They kind of threw the word out a while ago. On top of that, if these cards said I'm brumating, I would have 15 people a day asking me what the heck is that. The general public knows the word hibernating, so it makes it a little easier. And again, it's not technically wrong at all. After walking in here, making sure everybody's good, there are a handful of snakes out. A little Ornatus here cruising around. Anything that's young and then the tropical species, we don't hibernate, obviously. For the ones that do, they're out in our, we call it the hibernaculum. Note that it's called a hibernaculum, not a brumaculum. That's where uh, they are right now, sitting at about 48 to 50 degrees, and they ride three months of the year in that, in that system. All right, so enough talk about that. Let's go to the actual hibernaculum building and see what's in there. This is a really cool outbuilding that we built to specifically hibernate the entire collection. What kind of makes it necessary, you know, in other states you might not need something like this, but Arizona has such mild winters that it can be tricky getting things cold enough for a lot of the high elevation montane species, things like that. So we built this basically to be a big climate controlled outbuilding that no matter what Mother Nature's doing, if we get an 80 degree day in winter, which we do get those here from time to time, um, it's not gonna get too warm in there. We can set it and forget it and yeah, it's a sweet setup. All right, hopefully you can hear me okay with the fan going. So this is it. This is, uh, again, 200 square feet. We've got four inches of closed cell foam insulation, so it's really thickly insulated. This air conditioning system has been modified to allow this room to get much below 60. Most air conditioners don't have a setting below 60 degrees, but they are capable of getting there. Um, so we have a device called a cool bot that actually overrides the thermostat of the AC unit and it can get this room down to essentially wherever I set it at, um, anywhere in the 40s easily. Uh, for most snakes, uh, typically mid 40s to maybe mid 50s is about where they should be uh, kept for hibernation, brumation. So we, we usually have it right around uh, 48, 49 right in there. And the other thing in here is you'll notice um, we got a little bubbler going in a bucket, just keep the humidity up a little bit. Um, there is a, a ventilation fan that pulls some air out. I have it on a timer so it's only on, on at night. And then all of these guys are in their racks and these sheets just kind of keep it a little darker, keep the uh, draft from the AC from hitting them directly. This is where they sit for the winter. It's a little chilly, at least for Arizona people, 50s is, is chilly. So I'm sure you guys would love to see more snakes and less in my face. We'll check on a few of these and see how they're doing. Low desert black tail. Molossus. Everybody loves a good Cerberus. Check on him. There he is. This guy's kind of changed color with uh, the winter cycling. Usually he's dark on the sides too, but he almost has like a blue gray color right now. All right, so here's a big albino diamondback. This is the mother of a bunch of the bubblegum babies we've got. So you can see they're all just pretty much resting in here. 
uh, they don't do a whole lot during this time, um, but they do they do some things. So we do give them water. I have noticed and caught them in the action of, of drinking out of their water bowls. Right, everybody loves speckled. This is our big daddy white speckled in the back there. So all the low desert species, we typically leave in here for about three months. So it's about December 1st, all the way to uh, about March 1st, give or take. And then for species like that Arizona black rattlesnake, those guys will leave in another two weeks to a month longer. These copperheads have a really cool glow to them when they're cooled down. Let's take a quick little peek here. Yep. Little Trans Pecos Copperhead, Grand Canyon Rattlesnake. They're kind of just, I don't know if sleeping is the right word, but resting and waiting for things to warm up again. All right, so when animals hibernate in nature, uh, especially you know, rattlesnakes, reptiles, they're typically seeking a, a specific spot to, to overwinter. They're looking for you know, good safe cover, they're looking for stability, so not, you know, a spot that's gonna fluctuate drastically in temperatures. And ideally, it's, you know, it's a little damp, uh, not, not wet, but not uh, bone dry either, and uh, dark, quiet, and so I say all that to point out that that's basically what this mimics. You know, right now we're in here, we got lights on, these sheets are off, but when nobody's in here, this whole building is really quiet, it's really dark, there's a little bit of humidity created from their bedding, their water bowls, this bucket behind me that's running with an aquarium bubbler, and kind of keeps things just right for them. And that's how they ride out their, their winter torpor. You can see not all the snakes we do hibernate. It's not absolutely required in captivity, um, but again, we do it for their health, longevity, and all that stuff, especially for breeding. But uh, they are just fine staying warm year round too. Everybody loves our Sonoran toad who loves to thrash his tub. He's in the back corner here. That's Jabba. Also notice when we hibernate um, all this stuff that after they've had a couple weeks to warm up again, they get really hungry. That toad especially gets hungry. Alright, so that's our hibernaculum setup. So in a couple weeks actually, spring is right around the corner. We'll be putting everything back into exhibits and we do plan on doing a video as we're transferring everything over. So be sure to catch us on that one.